Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2017. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman here with Justin Warren. This is theCUBE's coverage of VMworld 2017. Believe it or not, it's our eighth year covering this show. Uh, about 23,000 here in attendance, uh, and pulls from around the world, even though there is a European show. But happy to welcome to the program a first-time guest of the Cube, someone I've known for, for a number of years. So uh, great, great to pull you in front of the camera, uh, Dan Frith, who is a consultant with Penguin Punk. We had uh, one of my guests this morning said, you know, this is the punk rock set, so <laughs> it only makes sense that you know you, you got the shoes and the hair, and yep. even hit, hit, hit a punk show uh, uh, here in Vegas uh, did, when I you did. first get here. So thanks for yep. joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, so Dan, just uh, for our audience, give us a little bit about you know, your background, you're heavily involved in the VMware community, you're a VMUG leader, yep. uh, you know, tell us <clears throat> your background, what you're doing these days. Yeah, sure, thanks Stu. So, um, I've been working with virtualization for about 15 years now. Um, started with Workstation, went to ESX2, and sort of it all went from there. Um, thought that was pretty cool stuff. Got me, kept me really busy for a long time. Uh, branched out into further data center technology, so I'm really interested in things that go in racks. Um, and how they can help people do stuff better, yeah, faster I, and smarter. I, I, I tell you, I, I've been working with VMware for about the same time, 15 years. Had a little bit more hair and less gray, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when that started. Um, I love like some of the like IBM to TV commercials where it was like, where'd all the servers go? You know, oh, put it yeah, into, yeah, that you know, awesome. racked it yeah. all up and things like that. To watch the evolution and the ebbs and flows yeah. of this community yeah. uh, has been pretty cool. Uh, so. You know, how important is VMware today in, in uh, your I, ecosystem and uh, yeah, it's, what, what's it's, going it's on? critical to what yeah. we do every day. Um, a lot of our customers are, are very VMware focused, uh, not just for the hypervisor, it's, it's all the management automation that we wrap around that stuff. NSX is becoming more and more critical to, to what we're doing. Um, got a lot of complicated cloud plays uh, happening locally, so NSX is really helping us to to get where we need to be, where traditionally maybe it was a bit of a slower, harder process. Um, we've certainly found that stuff like that is, is really helping us get get some good wins on the board, yeah. yeah could you unpack that a little bit mm. for us? Because yeah, it, it definitely coming into the show, you know, I hear a lot about you know, NSX, yeah. lots of customers doing when I talk to you know, so, some of the, you know, the ecosystem at large, it's like, well, you, when you really get in, there's some complicated pieces. That's I mean, right, we know yeah. networking security never going to be simple, no. so, What's, what are some of the you know, challenges? How do we get over some so, of them? And what, what does this really I, deliver? Yeah, I think some of the biggest challenges with networking and security in the enterprise isn't the actual tech anymore. It's, it's the way that we apply the processes to that tech, the policies, um, the frameworks and governments, that, you know, the risk compliance assessments, all that sort of stuff. But people don't necessarily understand that well inside their business. So having something like NSX come in, it gives them the opportunity, I think, to reassess what they're actually trying to achieve, um, what's critical from an application perspective down, rather than just thinking about the infrastructure and the tools that they're using. It's not just about switches, routers, firewalls anymore, it's about what am I actually trying to achieve, what really needs to talk to what, and oh, now I can make this happen with this tool that's actually really flexible and agile and, and very easy to, do, to, yeah. to get up and running. But the thing around the security aspect of it in particular is that it's, it's not the same sort of audience that you would normally be talking to if you're a VMware sort of person. That's right. It's usually ha handled by someone completely different. Similarly, the networking can be a little bit funny as well because yep. the networking people are all about the hardware and the switches and things that plug into it. Yep. And this virtual switching idea, like when I first heard NSX, you're going to teach BGP to virtualization And I, and I think that's, that's been very interesting as well. Like we, I, I think we saw the last 10 years, the storage and virtualization guys seem to come together reasonably well and start to cooperate on stuff. And mm. you know, we're finally sort of understanding what storage is to, to VMware guys and vice versa. Yeah. Whereas the networking stuff is still that dark art where okay. you have to have a certain number of letters after your name to make it work. Um, and the security guys, again, they're a whole different beast, right? So yeah. they're kind of like the DBAs of the infrastructure world. So. So how far along in that, that, using storage as sort of an analogy, how yeah. far down that journey of, of getting people together and to understand each other so, on both sides? Yeah, so I think it's still, it's still pretty early days. Like I know VMware's been very bullish about what NSX can do to transform your infrastructure. But I think there's a lot of conversations that still need to be had at a, at a reasonably high level in organizations to get um, people understanding exactly what they can do with this stuff. And I think realize the potential of what they can do Sometimes it's not actually, you know, 
what they need to do now, it's what they need to do three years from now. Mm. And I think a lot of businesses just aren't planning ahead that far, right? Yeah. It's still Dan, I'm curious your take on the keynote this morning. Uh, you know, Pat <coughs> got on stage, uh, had, I thought, good energy. I thought it was one of, one of his, his, his best keynotes that he's given. Absolutely. But for your audience, you know, kind of in your geo, you know, digital transformation, kind of the, the journey to cloud, uh, how much of that kind of hit home for you? Any, you know, critiques that you'd give? Um, so, so cloud's obviously a hot topic where, I, where I'm based. Um, the VMware on AWS story is getting more and more interesting, but again, yeah. for Australia, still not so much. You've got it in one geo right now. Australia's not going to be enabled for a while. Yeah. Uh, it took AWS a long time to get a presence down there. Well, I, I, I think if I heard right, they said within a year, by the time we come back to you know, VMworld yeah. next year, which I think yeah. is going to be in Vegas, unfortunately, again, uh, but they, they said we should be across all of the Amazon you know, availability zones. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, in which case that could be tremendously interesting, but uh, I've got to crunch a few numbers to, to make sure this really works because I like the idea, it's a, it's a, it's a neat idea. Um, it's very good for those legacy enterprises that don't really want to get away from, from vSphere just yet, who've got the kind of crusty applications that don't really run very well in public cloud, but they're, they're in the middle of that transformation piece perhaps. They, they're trying to get cloud native, this is a nice stepping stone. If, if VMware can execute on it, and it makes sense financially, which I'm... Yeah, so what are some of the financial price points that, that you know, you're seeing out there? Yeah. You know, we've heard over the years, you know, VMware sometimes is, everybody's yelling about it, yep. sometimes not as much. Cloud is, you know, going to be the savior, where, well, it's really expensive, everything kind That's of, right, it's you know, it goes sort of through. varies, and yeah. I think one of the points this morning, they said, oh, you know, you can, you can have a variable cost model, and a lot of the businesses I deal with, they hate that stuff, they, they <laughs> need to know, Every month, how much? Every month, how much they're going to spend? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, CFO doesn't like uncertainty, right? Absolutely <laughs> not. Yeah, and and this kind of stuff can get out of control really quickly. So, yeah, I, I'm not yet convinced. Unless you put the right controls, governance framework, on all that stuff on top of it, that's going to be the key thing, I think, for the success of, of this. Yeah. And yet, uh, there's a lot of talk about innovation, which involves change and risk. And so That's if we're right. trying to keep things into constrained boxes where we understand exactly what it's going to be, then, yeah. well, by definition, we're reducing as much risk as we can, which is kind of... Which, which is what's been fascinating with the customers I work with, who are all traditional enterprises, yeah. thin services, those types. They've got CIOs coming in saying, let's go to the cloud, everyone to the cloud. Yeah. They've send it all up there and they go, oh, my three-tier application actually doesn't work in this cloud, <laughs> I need to bring it back. Right. We've got those people going through those cycles already locally. That's, um, yeah, there's a lot of innovation going on at a, at a high level, but I think some of the homework hasn't been done to, to get, make that right. successful. And I think that's what people need to focus more on as an application-centric or even a, a business outcome-centric. You know, we use 2,000 applications in the enterprise, but what do they all do? <laughs> What are they for? What yeah. are they for? Are they just yeah. there because they've always been there, or can we get, you know, can we carve some of this stuff out? Yeah. yeah. How, how do software as a service and public cloud fit into that discussion? Yeah. Uh. Um, so I, I think they're going to be more and more critical. I think the maturity around some of the, the software as a service offerings has been really good. Um, people are loving, I guess, the the offload of risk and the offload of all, all care, no responsibility for SaaS. I think some of the the problem is around again, it's compliance risk. People aren't necessarily backing up their Office 365 stuff. Yeah. They're sort of relying on Microsoft to have things in place. Um, they're potentially not realizing some of the risk they're exposing themselves to. Not that yeah. this stuff is, is dodgy, but it's uh, it's tricky to navigate totally, how yeah. you actually yeah. protect. Oh yeah, I, I was talking to a security person yesterday, and and they were like, oh yeah, no, no. Well, if I just use SaaS, I don't need to worry about the security, right? And it it's was like, a no, you need to worry yeah. about it even more. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. It just yeah, we've, uh, we've seen plenty of examples of people who've put data into AWS, for example, and then just their S3 bucket is just open for the world to see. That's right. The simplicity adds a bit more mystery where it probably shouldn't. Yeah, I so think it's doing your homework and understanding the tools that you're about to go and use yeah, is Yeah, it's understanding it's the risks and understanding some of the consequences of your actions. Mm. It's not just about reducing the floor tiles on your on your on-premises stuff, it's about yeah. you know, understanding what the data is actually doing, where it's going, and what it's going to mean to someone if they get hold of that data. Yeah, well, but it's not a new situation, really. I mean, like, cloud's no. been around for over 10 years now. Yep. Um, a lot of these ideas of IT working with the business because that's what IT is about, that's it's right. not exactly a radical concept. It's not a, it's not a great, uh, it's not a massive change in, in what we're doing. And I, I think some of the problem is we haven't done that very well to begin with. Yeah. Now we've just put another infrastructure construct in place 
and gone, oh, well now we'll work with the business on this. Yeah. Unfortunately, when we still aren't working with the business, you've still got pockets of the business doing their own thing. It, yeah. It's poorly understood. IT is still a cost center, a, a pain, a drain on the business, if you will. Mm. Um, and it's, it's hard for them to, I think, bridge that gap. We need to focus a bit more, I guess, on uh, you know, making the, the gap between what the business is trying to achieve and what IT can do to help them. Um, I don't think the cloud necessarily takes that conversation away. Yeah, unfortunately, right. The technology is never going to be a silver bullet, but I, I heard you say that the that IT still is looked at as a cost center uh, for a lot of your environments. Yeah. You know, I, I hear people uh, maybe they're too optimistic. They said not only is IT you know not a cost center, they're working with the business. Maybe IT is driving the business. Right. Sounds like you, maybe you're not quite there yet. Uh, so, yeah. So I don't I don't think that's happening in the big enterprises just yet. Um, the more conservative ones are still struggling. I think with that bridging that gap between IT and business. Um, the ones who can't see the value of what they're doing from an IT perspective, they're always going to struggle with, with that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. How about just a general concept of digital transformation? You know, did, in, in your, uh, your area, is that something, are people embracing it? Uh, I read a great article actually by a networking, uh, one of the networking vendors, and he said, look, people might not agree with digital, dis uh, digital transformation, but digital disruption is definitely real. So, Absolutely. You know, if, what, if, what are you seeing? If there's a way we can shoehorn you know, a way of doing things differently into, into traditional business, into traditional IT companies as well, and making them understand that they're not just there to take all our money and not necessarily deliver on all their promises. Yeah. And if the business can start understanding that there is some value in IT, then I'm all for digital disruption if that's a mechanism to, to make that happen. Realistically, I'm still faced with the same challenges of, you know, legacy software being out of support and hardware that's sweating the asset, taking a little too far. Um, th those kind of problems are, are realistically what I'm still seeing every day. So it's kind of like the concept that Pat talked about in the keynote today of cyber hygiene, of like That's just, right. just yeah. doing and the basics doing of washing the basics. your hands. And I think some people are struggling with those basics because they've either never done it or they've sort of forgotten how to do it or they expect magically that their new shiny cloud will do that for them yeah. or their service provider and that's definitely not, not the case. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, we're still pretty early in the show, but any announcements so far, anything jump out at you, or uh, anything that you've seen yet that, that you'd want to highlight? Um, I, I'm excited about the, the VMware on AWS thing. I think it's good to, to finally see that announcement last year at VMworld US, and now it's generally available, but, yeah, limited, but generally available. Yeah, it was actually announced like a month after uh, the, the show last year, which it's, was one of the right, things yeah. we were a little frustrated that uh, you know there was a three-letter name, uh, you know, big company that they made an announcement with, which uh, was up on stage talking about security yeah, uh, today, yeah, yeah. but not so much their cloud so offering. Much about that stuff, yeah. Um, so it's been a yeah. weird. Uh, I'm not going to say it's a pivot, but it's certainly a little bit yeah. of a twist. So uh, you're, you're also a VMUG leader. What, yeah. what are the pain points that you're hearing uh, for, from people in the community? What do they look for out of the ecosystem that you know, would, would make their jobs a whole lot easier? Um, I think people are sometimes struggling with the complexity of the ecosystem. It's, it's still fairly broad and diverse, and sometimes people struggle to actually navigate their way through what they need to get done. Right. I think that's what a lot of our, our you know, VMUG members are struggling with day to day. So, I mean, I guess I don't see the, the, the vendors in the ecosystem solving that problem. It tends to be the distribution yeah. consultants and the like that that's will, right, will yeah. help explain that because, right, the, the, the problem we have, I mean, even if I just take, you know, take storage or networking, these yeah. are really complicated things and yeah. there's not going to be one solution that fits 90% of it. So that's, that's why right. I, need, I need to understand, you said, customer with 2,000 applications. How do I manage that stack yep. uh, of applications? How do, yep. how do I deal with that? Uh, you know, you're, you're a consultant, how do you, how do you, how do you help people through uh, you know, some of these uh, yeah, you so, know, giant uh, challenges? So I generally try to start with uh, what's important to people, like what's really making the business tick? Um, what hurts them the most when it goes down? What costs them money? And some people have a really hard time understanding how much money they're, they're you know, burning every time an application yep. falls over. And then we try to just make some links between, you know, the infrastructure, the application that keeps that outcome running for them. Yeah, w one of the things I, I, I've been poking at is there's too many things that IT is doing that they suck at. <laughs> and I'm not trying to <laughs> yep. poke at them, yep. it's the, what we call the undifferentiated heavy lifting. Oh, it's absolutely. It's like, come yeah. on, I think we talked to anybody, um, you're no good at building a data center, please don't do another one. That's Somebody right. else can do it. Now, I'm not saying it all goes to the public cloud, there's lots of options how you do that, but yeah. you know, from the ground up and as we work our way, right, What? 
drives the business, what you know creates value for the business, and finding those areas, uh, role the CIO is changing greatly, role of IT, yeah. it's going to look very different in five years than it does today. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think you know people don't necessarily appreciate the value of consultants who can help them on that journey uh, because it's it's hard. It, IT is hard. You know, enterprise is hard, and putting IT and enterprise in the same sentence that really makes it very hard. Yeah, so, very hard. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, pretty. You, you got to be careful. I saw there there was like one of those sarcastic memes years ago. It's like consultants. If you can't f solve the problem, at least there's lots of money to be made. That's right. Uh, you know, <laughs> moving it moving it along. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and and redefining the problem is uh, another fun one. That's always well. fun. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Um, so, Dan, uh, people want to learn more about what you're doing. H how do they find you? Uh, you know. Uh, to yep, so they can find me at penguinpunk.net. I've got a blog there. It's been running that for about ten years now. Uh, you find me on the Twitters at penguin penguin punk uh, and various other things. Come to a VMUG meeting in Brisbane if you're ever in the area. We'll uh, we'll buy you a beer and you know treat you nice. Excellent, love to do that. We've yet to do the Cube in Australia, but something that's <laughs> definitely uh, what, yep. what we want to do. Uh, Dan. So, Dan, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, uh, for Justin and Stu, we'll be back with lots more coverage here from VMworld 2017. You're watching the Cube.